In this video, we will create five amazing transitions right inside Premiere Pro. Before we proceed to the next step, if you don't want to create the transition from scratch and want to save time, you can grab my 300 transitions pack. It includes 10 different categories and all of them are drag and drop ready. By the way, these five transitions are also part of this pack. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. First transition is double edge glitch. Here I have two clips on my timeline. First, go to the project panel, right click, select new item, and choose adjustment layer. Then hit OK and drag that adjustment layer to the timeline above the clips. Next, right click on the adjustment layer and select speed duration. Set the time duration to one, then hit OK. Now drag that adjustment layer to the last frame of the first clip. In the effects panel, search for find edges and drag and drop it onto the adjustment layer. Again, drag it a second time and drop it onto the same adjustment layer. Then duplicate the adjustment layer by pressing the Alt key and place it one frame forward. Next, place the playhead in the middle and move two frames backward. Duplicate the adjustment layer again and place it here. Then move two frames forward from the middle and duplicate the adjustment layer a fourth time. The transition is now ready. Here are the final results. Second transition is triple glitch. For this transition, I have used two clips. You have to create a new adjustment layer, or you can also use the previously created adjustment layer. Just drag and drop it over your clips. From the middle of the clips, move nine frames to the left, make a cut, and delete the adjustment layer. Then go back to the middle, move six frames to the right, make a cut, and delete the adjustment layer. Now you have an adjustment layer with nine frames from the left and six frames from the right in length. Let's duplicate the adjustment layer. Hold Alt and click with the left mouse button on the layer and drag it one track above. Duplicate it again for the third time. Now we have three adjustment layers. Let's apply effects on them. Go to the effects panel, search for wave warp and drag it onto the first adjustment layer. Then go to the effect controls panel and change the following settings. Set wave type to noise, wave height value to 240, wave width value to 750, direction to zero, pinning to all edges, now you have this effect applied on your clip. Next, trim the adjustment layer. Move the playhead to the start of the adjustment layer, move one frame forward and make a cut, Control plus K. Then move two frames forward and make another cut. Delete the first portion, move one more frame forward, make a cut, then move two frames forward, make another cut, and delete the previous portion. Now go to the end of the adjustment layer. From here, move one frame forward, make a cut, then move two frames forward and make another cut, and delete the previous portion. Now it's time to apply the second effect on the second adjustment layer. First, trim this adjustment layer to a total of six frames, three on the left side and three on the right side. Then go back to the effects panel, search for VR digital glitch, and drag and drop it onto the second adjustment layer. In the effect controls panel, under VR digital glitch, expand the distortion property and change the following values. Geometry distortion Y value to 25. Geometry distortion Z value to eight and distortion rate to 70. Now we have this beautiful effect between the two clips. Let's apply the third effect on the third adjustment layer. Go to the effects panel, search for VR chromatic aberrations, and drag and drop it onto the third adjustment layer. Leave it as is, or if you want, you can adjust the values according to your needs to get the best possible result. You can also reuse on other clips as well. Mark the middle point by selecting the first adjustment layer and pressing M on the keyboard. This will tell you where the middle point of the effect is. Next time, simply select all the adjustment layers and drag and drop it between your other clips to apply this effect easily. It will apply seamlessly. Third transition is zoom flow. For this type of transition, I have multiple clips on my timeline. Go to the start of the first clip, then move six frames forward and press W on your keyboard to cut and delete the extra part of the clip. Then again, move six frames forward and press W and repeat this process until you have trimmed all your clips, leaving the last one as it is. Now go to the effects panel, search for transform, and drag and drop it onto the first trimmed clip. Then go to the effect controls panel, move the playhead to the start, and add a keyframe for scale. Change the scale value from 100 to 200. Now move to the end of the clip and reset the scale value back to 100. To make the animation smoother, right click on the last keyframe and select ease in. Then right click on the first keyframe and select ease out. Also introduce motion blur by unchecking use composition shutter angle and setting the shutter angle to 360. Now at the start, we have the clip scaled up to 200 and as it moves forward, it gradually goes back to normal. To apply this effect on all the other clips, just select the transform effect in the effect controls panel, right click and choose copy, then select all the remaining clips and press Ctrl plus V to paste the same effect onto them. Now see the final results. 
Fourth transition is cinematic zoom. For this transition, I have two clips on my timeline. First, drag an adjustment layer above the clips. Place the playhead between the clips and move 10 frames to the left, then make a cut there and delete the extra part of the layer. Now go back to the middle, move 10 frames to the right, make a cut, and delete the remaining part of the layer. After that, go to the effects panel and search for the transform effect, then drag and drop it onto the adjustment layer. Next, search for Gaussian blur and drag and drop it onto the same adjustment layer as well. In the effect controls panel, move the playhead to the center of the adjustment layer, set a keyframe for scale, and increase its value from 100 to 200. Then move six frames to the left and reset the scale value. Go back to the middle, then move six frames to the right and reset the scale value again. Now, select the last keyframe, right-click on it, and choose Ease In. Then right-click on the first keyframe and choose Ease Out. Also, uncheck Use Composition Shutter Angle and set the shutter angle to 180. Next, move the playhead to the middle of the adjustment layer again and set a keyframe for blurriness. Increase the blur amount to 50, then move 6 frames back and reset it, and finally move 6 frames forward from the middle and reset its value again. Now you have this beautiful, smooth zoom transition. Fifth transition is Mask Slide. For this transition, I have placed two clips on my timeline. First, move the playhead between the clips, then right-click on the second clip and select Insert Frame Hold Segment. Move the Hold Frame clip one track above onto the first clip and trim this clip to one second. Then move back the second clip and attach it to the first clip. Now select the Hold Frame clip and go to the Effect Controls panel. Under Opacity, click on the Pen tool and create a mask on the person or object you want in your clip. After that, move the playhead to the start and set a keyframe for position. Move that keyframe to the second last frame of the clip. Now move the playhead between the clips and change the position value to move your subject out of the frame. You can also decrease or increase the space between these two keyframes depending on your preference. Next, select both keyframes, right click, go to Temporal Interpolation, and choose Ease In. Then again, right click and select Ease Out for smoother animation. Expand the velocity curve and move the easing handle all the way to the left. Now you have created this transition. It looks awesome. If you want to continue the lesson, click on the I button in the top right corner to check out my video on the 7 best Premiere Pro transitions. You can also find all the relevant links in the description below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more awesome tutorials just like this one.